After two-year hiatus, BYU is back in the big dance, and their first-round matchup pits them against a team that hasn't been there since 1977, the Duquesne Dukes. I am Riley Davis. He is Subi. You're watching the Sleepers Media YouTube channel, where we are breaking down every game this March from previews to recaps, maybe a couple bonus episodes thrown in. Subi, when you look at this game... You know, we, we we teased it with Duquesne, you know, the first dance since 1977. They weren't supposed to be here, and you but you got a BYU team who started off strong. Uh, then again, there were some allegations of chicanery with maybe metrics juicing, but ultimately sort of proved their worth down the stretch. But what do you think are the biggest storylines in this game, and how do you expect it to unfold? Oh, I love that you asked me about storylines, man. I love storylines. Can we just talk about storylines instead of the nitty gritty? I know we got an audience, but like <laughs> numbers and, and stats, things like that. Well, in, in this particular case, I actually do think the biggest storyline that's going to uh, overshadow anything else is Keith Dambrot retiring at the end of the season head coach for Duquesne. And that was announced, I think just earlier this week. So whenever that run is over his run, is over. Um, but as it relates to the game itself, um, it's going to be a challenge for Duquesne. Okay. They are relatively efficient on the defensive end are the Dukes. They're playing great basketball right now. They'll do a decent job of turning you over. I think they do an all right job of that. Um, and the last three games, actually Duquesne, I think has held their opponents under 60 or so points. So they've been really good the last mm -hmm. few games. Uh, the issue is that you were doing that against a 10 competition with what the top two seeds out. Uh, <laughs> now you're going up against a BYU team that shoots the three ball, like, like Marine shoot. Like they just absolutely pepper the net with threes. They're unbelievable. Jackson Robinson, I think leads the team and made threes. Trevin Nell shoots nearly 40%. I mean, I'm looking at their roster top to bottom. I think the janitor can get you 35% on threes. It's unbelievable what BYU can do. But we've seen this before with teams in the tournament, Riley. If they go cold, it's a little treacherous. We saw them get absolutely blasted by Texas Tech, I think it was, in the Big 12 tournament. Mm -hmm. They were not that great from, from three. So BYU has some incredible wins, including a 15-point victory over Iowa State. But the key here is how can Duquesne try and tread water if BYU's burying threes? That's for me. <laughs> yeah, I, I pretty much agree with all your points. Uh, Duquesne has been very efficient, very potent even on that defensive end recently. But like you said, huge uptick in competition here. And I kind of just want to wax poetic about this BYU team for a second because I was very much on the they are frauds train early in the season. I think my feelings were just hurt because my Carolina Tar Heels were still ranked below them on Ken Palm for like the first half of the season, and I didn't understand. Then I started watching more and more BYU, and it's just like, I mean, you look at Mark Pope's history, and he is established himself as an offensive mastermind. I, I know that Mark Madsen did a tremendous job at Utah Valley after him, but Pope walked so he could fly. Even if you go back to 2019, he had Utah Valley 16th in the country in effective field goal percentage. He's brought that same uh, potent offense down to Provo, where that number went all the way up to second in the country his first year at BYU in 2020 when the when the, the tournament was canceled. But yeah, you hit on it. This this roster is just dotted with shooters. They have so many dudes who can make at least 38% uh, or better, not to mention one of the most fun players in the country and Ali Khalifa. Uh, Khalifa, I made this joke last week on a Sleepers podcast that Ali Khalifa is who people want Robbie Avila to be. <laughs> and he's actually going to be in the tournament like he's a he's a heftier big man with an unorthodox game. If you watch the highlights, you probably would think he, he's averaging like 18, 9, and 7, when in reality he's really only averaging like 6 points and 4 assists. But those 4 assists come in just under 20 minutes a game, which is still pretty uh, pretty impressive like they they can run offense through him he, he's an expert at finding guys cutting to the basket back door getting easy looks so I, I i love the way that well i should just say i love the potential for him to to steal the hearts of america if byu can string together a couple of wins here yeah and i hope i hope we didn't jinx it because everyone who was making the corny lame tired joke of like a photo of robbie avila and they were like you're this is going to be america's sweetheart in a month it's like guys 
Indiana State is not a sure thing, even at this <laughs> juncture. So I'm hoping uh, we fall in love with uh, with him as well. So here for BYU. But what I will say on the Duquesne side, just continuing to break them down, their offense struggles quite a bit. Dede Grant, Jimmy Clark, I mean, get a good night's rest, hit the breakfast bar, get your nutrients, because you're going to be doing the heavy lifting, man. Mm-hmm. It's those two guys. I don't know who else wants to step up. Hopefully someone does. That's the beauty of March, right? But I'm looking at if if what I'm trying to analyze is what I've seen in the past, Day Day Grant and Jimmy Clark are the ones that are going to have to do everything. And I don't know how you want to read into their A-10 title game, Riley. I didn't even think they played all that well at a comprehensive level. Like mm-hmm. they got out to a great start. The confetti shot in the second half and they just stopped playing basketball and VCU climbed all the way back in it. Mm-hmm. Now again, Duquesne ended up winning, but Duquesne didn't really play that well this last time out. I think, I suppose they have to rely on their defense and hope BYU misses shots. Yeah, I just think they it's, they seem a little happy to be here. Your coach is retiring. You're in the in March Madness for the first time since, like, I don't know, the counterculture movement. Uh, their, their offense just concerns me <laughs> too much. And oddly enough, it was... Like they put up 1.23 points per possession against St. Louis in the first round of the A10 tournament. St. Louis just fired their coach. Take that for what you will. They're it's a just catastrophe. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so maybe don't put too much stock into that. These are not your St. Louis teams of old. Uh, Jordan Air Jets not walking through that door. But no. It's, <laughs> like I, I just can't get over that. Day Day Grant is in his fifth year of college and is the past three seasons, I think, or three out of his five years, he's been under 40% from the field. BYU's not great defensively, but they're still a top 50 unit on that end. I don't know. It's it's going to be an uphill battle for Duquesne, and I think there's some blowout potential here for BYU if the threes are falling. Where are you at? Yeah, 100%. They've, we've seen them blow out good Big 12 teams. So why why can't they do that against the sixth best, best team we would think in the A10. There's definitely be a blowout potential here. Yeah, and before we get to score predictions, we can maybe unpack this a little bit further and give our personal takes. I'm going to take some time to give a shout out to one of the sponsors of the channel, My Bookie. So experience the thrill of March Madness with My Bookie because if you're on a sport uh, if you're on a hunt for a sports book to call home, you can bet the nonstop action of March Madness with them. So enter the bracket contest for a chance to take home prizes of up to $25,000 or pick from a huge selection of straight bets, props, and odds boosts. Whatever your style, my bookie makes it easy to play your way and get paid. If you sign up now, you can take advantage of our generous welcome offer to score a massive first deposit bonus of up to $1,000. And all you have to do is claim promo code SLEEPERS. That's right, promo code SLEEPERS. Doesn't get much easier than that. The fun doesn't stop there. You get up to the minutes, up to the up to the minute odds, free bets, and expert predictions to help you decide who to put your money on. Again, that's promo code sleepers. Subi, I'm going to turn it to you. Give me a score prediction for this one. So I think BYU gets to the high 80s. I think they average around 80 or 81. Uh, inferior opponent from an inferior conference, and Duquesne is all right defensively. I think that'll allow them to maybe score seven or eight more points above their average, but. Duquesne's offense is just not that special and BYU, like you mentioned, like they're known for being an offensive team, but it's not like they're complete. It's not like they're Alabama uh, playing defense stray for Bama. I'm sorry, but I'm going to say BYU 88 uh, Duquesne 66. Wow. 22 point victory. I like the boldness. Kim Palm has the spread as Duke, or excuse me, BYU by eight. And eight. yeah, only BYU minus eight. I think they win by more than that. I'm closer to the 15 to 20 range as well. I'll mix it up a little bit and say they win 85, 67. Don't get quite to, to 20 games being played in Omaha. Uh, I don't know about you, Subi. I know you said you're from the Northeast currently in Chicago. I've lived in the South for 95% of my life. And I kind of think once you get to the flyover States and into uh, the, the Utah, I, I like, don't think of Utah as the West coast, but not really the Pacific North. I guess they're Pacific Northwest. No, not really mm, Northwest. No, no, no. What I is just Utah? Think of it. Utah. I mean, I would say they're West coast, but if you were to specify a bit more, I'd just say like the mountain area, I suppose. Definitely not Pacific Northwest though. Yeah. That was, that was some bad geography on my part. Please That's don't right. flame me in the comments. Uh, 
you could stay for more geography lessons with me and Subi. <laughs> All that is to say is Omaha is closer to Provo than it is to Pittsburgh. So I'm expecting this to be maybe a more favorable BYU crowd as well. Uh, whatever happens, though, we will be back on the Sleepers Media YouTube channel, breaking it down, telling you everything you need to know about it, all the crazy moments. We'll be reacting to buzzer beaters, everything in between from now until the end of the tournament. I'm Riley Davis. He's Subi. We're signing off for this one.